so the problems the problems I encountered was I thought mm -hmm. I could just follow the pattern of redirects that were in the in the repository. And then I attempted to do a make run and confirm that the redirects were working and mm -hmm. couldn't test them. So the first question is, what's the format for a redirect? And then the second question is, how do I test to be sure the redirect worked before I submit the pull request? Okay, let's uh, do that. I'll just share my screen. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, let's look how our redirects implemented. Actually, uh, if you go to the repository in content, the easiest way to find redirects, uh, there is just a redirect folder. Okay, redirect. and all redirects are in that folder, no matter where they are in the structure mm. of the repository? Mm, or no, no matter where they are? No, they are not. Okay. Uh, they are not. So okay. that's uh, the thing, because redirect is basically the same as everything else. It just has a special layout type, which is called redirect. Okay. And when uh, the website is generated, when this layout uh, is uh, passed, uh, the page basically injects uh, um, uh, information. So it either re redirect or localized redirect, depending on your browser local. So basically, you get redirected property URL if you navigate uh, to link like redirect API token. So let's see okay. how it works. Uh, then can say your redirect uh, API token. Okay, no trailing slash. Okay, now it doesn't work. So let's, uh, uh, it's because of redirect. So if we put redirect, uh, it should be working and it shouldn't uh, really matter whether there is trailing slash or not. Okay, all right. Um, okay. It matters if you configure redirects uh, via VC host. So if you use old ways, uh, way to define redirects here, then it really matters. Okay, uh, uh, just uh, VC host. Yeah, it's actually, I think you mean vhost.conf. Oh, vhost, right. Uh, yeah, vhost.conf, and uh, this one we need for Confluence, let's see. So for yes. Confluence, uh, yeah, you can see a bunch of redirects. Mm -hmm. Here, yes, it does matter whether you put slash or not. Same, uh, it matters for Nginx config. Um, if you have redirects configured in engines config, which is the case for some locations within the website. But the modern way is to actually do it like that. And okay. uh, let me show you demo how to basically develop it locally. Okay. So we go back to Jenkins IO repository. And yeah, we know that yesterday Hero submitted a bug for redirect, which is here. So redirect Jenkins X project to Jenkins IO. Mm -hmm. So basically what happened today, at some point we deleted the page, uh, but yeah, due to the bug in our implementation, uh, it doesn't mean that the page actually gets delivered, uh, deleted from the production instance. So, because we just uh, basically are sync files and we do not uh, remove files which are not uh, available. At least that's my understanding of the bug. Right, that's that's mine as well. The rsync doesn't do a minus minus delete, or if it does, something goes wrong. Yeah. Okay. So in our case, what it means, uh, we have a link which is projects Jenkins X. So here, let's sorry. Um, so here we go to content, and uh, not the content. So projects, and in projects, so there is no Jenkins X at all because at some point it was moved to, to a separate project. And then basically um, uh, we just deleted the, the entire content, just a single page from here. So we can actually see some examples. So for example, uh, for BlueOcean roadmap, we also use a redirect because at some point when BlueOcean project development was stalled, we put a redirect here. So what I suggest to do, do exactly the same for Jenkins X, uh, because we need to retain URL structure. And the uh, only way is to actually put a link right inside. Uh, still, what you need to be keep in mind that, for example, this page um, uh, projects uh, listing is auto-generated. No, so, well, no, it's not actually auto-generated. It's just uh, fancy syntax. So it should be okay if you just add a additional projects uh, there. 
but, so, but we do have we do have some subdirectories I think that have exactly the condition you're describing where they are auto generated and I might have to yeah. do some exception in the auto generation if I'm inserting a redirect. Yeah, or just type for type uh, for uh, check for type of the page. So oh, for example, okay. uh, I do it uh, in other locations. So let uh, let me sh yeah I believe that adopter page is implemented like that. So adopters you can see that there is Hamel. This Hamel basically takes information from data adopters. And yeah, no, there is no longer type check, I believe. But yeah, so here you can actually see the remainder of this check before we move to the data. So it just checks whether the page is readme. But you can also check for the data type of page and, for example, ignore redirects. Okay, so so for mm -hmm. instance, here the fact that I removed T-Mobile as an adopter, it mm -hmm. was it was handled very nicely because there isn't a T-Mobile page that's created. the The adopters page is generated from data that's the assembly of a series of ADOC files. All right, and okay. uh, at the same time, uh, there is no so these uh, data pages they are not uh, mapped to the website, so they are not published as pages. Got so, it, right. Uh, for you, it was enough. Otherwise, you could have hit uh, the same bug. So okay. what we will do here, let's go back to our redirects. Uh, so we have uh, our projects. I'll take a redirect from uh, BlueOcean. And I just put it on the top level um, here. Uh, here it's rename. Uh, Jenkins X, right? So you're not creating a new folder named Jenkins X and an index.adoc inside it. You're just creating Jenkins X.adoc. Well, it doesn't matter. You can uh, do it either way. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. And uh, in this uh, task, we were asked to actually redirect uh, to this uh, Jenkins page. So this is exactly what we will do. We will put a redirect URL here. Obviously, they don't have um, relocalization URLs, etc. And mm -hmm. yeah, we can just keep it as is. Uh, so in redirects, you basically have two ways. One way is to put absolute link. Another way is to actually put a relative link, though I'm not 100% sure whether we actually use it anyway these days. Uh, but yeah, relative redirect uh, links should also work. Ah, okay. So, so if if it had been a redirect to another page inside, and and can I embed um, IDs inside the redirect URL? So X Y Z hash mark one two three. Mm, hash mark what? Uh, so, uh, so could I put a redirect? Could I put a hash mark inside the redirect URL? Mm. Um, Oh, I, I may have to quote it. Okay. Yeah, you can quote and put uh, basically, basically any content, but okay. uh, this YAML doesn't support variable resolution. So it should be absolute value without any additional macros or whatever. Okay. Okay. And yeah, I'm just checking. So relative URLs should be also used for sex installer. Yeah, when you replace it for sex installer, yeah, I used uh, relative redirects and they work. Okay, great. Okay, so here what we added, we added a Jenkins X page in projects, which points somewhere. Now I will just uh, launch the site. So it may take a while, uh, but yeah, this should be no magic, it should work. Uh, what you need to keep in mind is that since we modify metadata, uh, the change won't be reliably applied until you reload. At the same time, after recent updates of our struct, it actually sometimes works. So if you want to, we will verify it once uh, it loads. So I'm not sure I understand what you mean by, mm -hmm. by reload. What, what do you mean there? Is so, that... uh, when you develop, uh, let's say, common content like pages like that, you can just write text to load the page in your browser and ah. you will see new content. Uh, it will not be a case for this page, if I recall correctly, but yeah, let's try it. Okay, yeah, uh, so so what you said trigger matches for me with the experience that sometimes I have to stop and do make run again. 
I think that's that's okay. Got it. Yeah, this uh, experience actually gradually improves because we also update dependencies. So, for example, now images will get updated if they change, mm. uh, but uh, they still need to be indexed. So, if you add new images, same as if you need uh, new pages, you have to restart. Otherwise, yeah. these pages uh, will not be discovered. The same, for example, for data files. So, if you modify anything there, like that, or unfortunately change log, then you need right. to load to see the effective result. Okay. Now, now I've had mm -hmm. while we're waiting for that to generate, and as soon as it's done, we can certainly go back to it. But uh, I've had one more. Time. Okay, I've had one more challenge with generation that I'm not quite sure how to resolve, and that's with the mm -hmm. change log. The new downloads page includes a computation that uses the SHA-256 hash in the page. And if I reference a build that does not yet exist, as far as I can tell, page generation fails. Um, is there a way for me to conditional that so that it doesn't, so that instead of failing, it will just leave the SHA-256 blank or some you such thing? In the downloads, right? Uh, yes, yeah. So I, mm -hmm. I usually navigate to the changelog page by going through downloads. And if I'm referencing a build that does not yet exist, uh, the downloads page doesn't work because I think because it can't find the SHA-256 for that that build or it's trying to get some other data about the build. Have you reported the bug for that? No, I have not because I've been okay. busy. No, not at all. I have not reported it. Okay, so here you, you can see the code while we wait. So you can see that it actually goes uh, to Jenkins Maven repository and reads uh, the entire sh file so yeah it will fail if open operation fails so here the tricky thing is uh, to actually understand what happens because uh, so this part uh, is basically uh, a part of uh, ruby code inserted into uh, the jelly file in the haml file sorry mm -hmm. so it's not enough so if they don't have a conditional open operation or whatever, then you don't have much option here. Uh, because it's basically this operation which fails, so it fails to download the data and likely it throws exception. Got it. Got it. Okay. So yeah. so that's the place I need to investigate. And I certainly can investigate to see if I can find a conditional operation in Ruby or okay, yeah. great. So then if the, you want a, a solution which is guaranteed to work, you can replace this code by Ruby. You can put it somewhere, just a second. Uh, for example, uh, one way of do that, why do we store Ruby code in this repository? I forgot. So, Not in so there's a way, there's a way to actually put Ruby functions or Ruby, Ruby methods. Oh, yeah. nice. Uh, okay. Uh, not, uh, not this one, so just a second. I'm uh, trying to remember where we put it. Uh, but yeah, you can uh, put some Ruby code right inside the repository. And it could or, be the conditional open then. Yeah. Uh, so just a second. And also you can uh, put it in other components. For example, this is how we provision macros. Macros are written in uh, Ruby. Uh, but yeah, again, you shouldn't really need it. Second, yeah, I forgot where it's located. So, yeah, that, that's uh, so just... the easiest way to get it is like that. Uh, okay, so here you can see that, for example, uh, there is already some con content text uh, which puts uh, a grid guide and uh, it does some magic uh, in uh, Ruby. So basically, you can just do try catch and whatever other stuff needed there. And hence prevent uh, the error. Great. Okay. So, so those. All right. Is it excellent? Thank you. Thanks very mm -hmm. much. Okay. So while we we're talking, uh, our site has started. For me, yeah, this recording it takes extremely long time on this laptop. Okay. So here is our site. Here is our sub projects. In sub projects, we don't see Jenkins X which is good. At the same time, yeah, let's go to the projects just to make sure. We, we... Okay, there is Jenkins X here, but 
Oh, let me guess. There is a Jenkins X here because uh, nobody really deleted it from from here. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so so that that may be another one we need to get rid of. But yep. but okay. So yeah, you can uh, take it as a home task. Uh, right. Uh, but yeah, whatever. So uh, what we need to uh, check. So he it's uh, replaced uh, to redirect. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's not redirect, it's just hard coded in the definition. We can check it if you want, but it's definitely hard coded. Uh, okay, I shouldn't have been opening so many tabs. So projects, uh, Jenkins, yeah, it's in index. So here you can just scroll to Jenkins X and yeah, you can see this content. There it is, right, okay. Okay, now let's uh, try our redirect uh, projects uh, Jenkins X. Yeah, so now redirect works. Victory, okay. So and, yeah, if you put a custom link, yeah, you get no not found, but it's fine because this uh, page had no sub pages. Mm -hmm. and if you take something like that, it works. Excellent. Uh, okay, not exactly like that. Sorry. Um, yeah, so Jenkins X, yeah, custom page, it won't redirect you. Uh, but if it's uh, an anchor link, it will redirect you, if I recall correctly. Yep. Okay. okay so we can uh, also test whether uh, live reload works here now, but yeah, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, live reload uh, works here now. Okay. Oh, good. Okay, so it it even though that was that's a data thing, it somehow reread the data. Yeah, so again, uh, we keep updating our uh, upstream dependencies. So we use Elstruct, which is a framework not maintained by us. Uh, so yeah, at some point, they improved the behavior of our metadata. And Oleg, you don't need to actually do this. I can take it from here if you'd like. It's a okay. great experience for me to redo and be sure that I know how to do it. Uh, well, uh, you will have an opportunity to do that because uh, I'm doing it for one one link, and you still have... ah, that's true. I've got to do the T-Mobile one, and yeah, yeah. good, okay. So, yeah, I'll just put it since uh, uh, I have it anyway. Mm -hmm. So, do we just uh, remove uh, it from projects? I think we should. I, I don't see any reason to have have it listed there in projects. I think we should also remove Evergreen from projects. Okay. Well, uh, Evergreen, yeah, we I have an action item to actually park it. It's ah. it's a bit more than that, and I, yeah, for Evergreen, it's already a bit strange because it's listed as sub project. It's not listed here. Right. It, because it, we dropped it at some point. Okay, so we then remove Jenkins X entirely, and we also need uh, to update uh, the row here to uh, left. So we need to realign the image for Jcask. Now we reload it. Oh, because the images are intentionally alternating. Got it. Well, at some point we thought that it looks cool. But it does look good. I like that. Okay, it's not our uh, uh, the most active page. Okay. Okay, so we did this fix. I push it to my remote. Yeah. So basically, do you know what happens next? I need to pull request. So, so VS Code does not have an interface to the hub command. You mm -hmm. might, you might, you might explore that because I love the hub command because it will let me do this from the inside my IDE as well. Well, uh, most likely it has. Uh, I'm not actively using that. Ah, okay. But yeah, I believe that it's something. Okay, hub, hub. And yeah, so there is yeah, like yeah, it looks like there are several. Good, okay. Well, uh, basically, this console is yeah, you can add hub to just your pass if you want. Mm. 
So it depends on uh, what is your preferences. Right. Uh, in my case, yeah. So what was the defect number? Okay. Yeah, let's call it a bug, doesn't really matter. Okay, so here's our pull request. Excellent. And GitHub did the connection between that, did the linking because you referenced it in the, the text. It linked yeah. it in the bottom right. Excellent. Very good. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, basically that's it. Thank you, Oleg. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.